I'm Negar Kiovash. I'm an assistant professor at University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. I've been a faculty member with the Department of Industrial Engineering since 2009. Prior to that, I actually was in Illinois again. I did my PhD in Electrical Engineering Department. Before that, I did my undergraduate degree in Sharif University, Tehran, Iran. My specialization is information theory and statistical signal processing, and I apply it to network inference problems as well as forensics and security. I always loved math, so I knew I want to do something that is a mathematical science. So in my home country, the way it works is that we have an entrance exam that everybody takes. And most of the time, the people that score really high end up doing electrical engineering. And what is great about uh, information theory, it lets you do both engineering and math together because it's really applied mathematics. So my master's thesis, I did cryptography, which is very close to information theory because there are a lot of information theories that care about information security. So there is information theoretic security, there is the more classical cryptography, and they all meet. There's always been some uh, cross-pollination between the fields. Once um, I did my master's thesis for my PhD, I started working on some of these problems regarding to multimedia security. At the end of the day, all of these are just problems that are important in society and you could make an impact but also I could use the mathematics I love to address them. Then I started getting really interested in point processes and it took me to a whole new field of looking at timing channels, information you can convey through timing. In fact looking at the times neurons fire in the brain and you can decide which parts of brain are in fact influencing the other ones. So that got me to this whole question of causality. So I started studying time series and inferring causality. We all understand Understand correlation. For instance, you know that if it has rained, the pavement is gonna be wet. But there's something more, so we just take it as granted for you know humans that there has been a causal pattern here. It rained, hence the pavement is wet. Oftentimes in science, when we make observations, it's not quite easy to tell did A cause B or B cause A, or was it a simultaneous actually causation, or is it just a correlation that is resulting from yet a third factor causing them. When I mention the word inference, it's really just trying to understand a phenomena after it has occurred. So in something like brain, when we look at these causal inference problems, the idea is just understanding how human brain works. Another area which I am very interested in these days is this notion of insertion and deletion codes. It naturally occurs in packet networks when you communicate. Also, it actually happens in a lot of biological problems. So we basically have this theory that we developed about understanding information leakage in timing channels. It has been applied to analyze various things. So one of them is the security threat that you can face if you're just surfing the internet and um, an intruder can try to send ping signals to your DSL router and try to actually figure out what website you're using. So this lets us calibrate various scheduling policies that are used and try to design new ones that mitigate these type of threats. So I think it's a very interesting time for information theory because a lot of the original problems, the fundamental problems were uh, captured assuming things like source models that we were observing and so on were IID information. There was not too much dynamics in our problems. So more and more as um, new problems come on uh, to, into our field, one issue is that incorporating dynamics. There's this whole other area that information theory was more classically tool to look at asymptotic behavior. And now there's all this new work that comes in and we, we are interested in finite block lens. The whole idea of big data so as we have more and more data coming in, sometimes maybe we cannot do all those precise, perfect formulations, but could we have algorithms and approaches that are quick and they can still give you information about huge amount of data. So we're just basically using our knowledge and math and going beyond maybe just traditional communication problems. 
So of course there are fewer women in uh, information theory, but I think it's true in general for mathematical sciences. And I feel that this is a pipeline issue because once you come to grad school, there's a lot of support. Everyone is nice and there are a lot of female role models that are great people and you want to emulate them. But the issue is that I think we should really try to do more work at, I would say, high school, middle school, even maybe younger to interest women in engineering and sciences. And if the pipeline issue gets fixed, then we would have it at graduate level, obviously, at higher levels in academia. There's anything in life you love, go find somebody who does that. And if you share your passion with them, I'm sure they will be more than happy to give you advice, mentor you. And in fact, IT Society has a fantastic mentoring program that pairs the students with uh, faculty mentors and so on. So just go for it. <laughs> So WINITS was actually funded by Professor Medard Muriel, who is a, a real advocate of women. She's very passionate about that in IT society. And it's something I feel very passionate about, but also it's a great opportunity because it lets me connect to all my sisters in IT society. And I hope we make some impact and you know, at least encourage some of the younger generation to pursue their dreams. Sometimes young people have this ideas that mostly comes to them by media, right? That they think it's a certain type of person who looks like a mathematician or a information theory. And I think it's not true. Like, you know, we all look differently. We have different lives, different backgrounds. I have colleagues that are fantastic dancers. I have, in fact, two or three colleagues that they're Iron Man. We're just a normal spectrum of people. We, we have a love for mathematics and information theory, but, you know, definitely we are no Sheldon from Big Bang Theory. <laughs> I just love my job. And I love being around young people. I like this turnover. Like, you know, when these young people come in the class, you're teaching, suddenly you feel like you have become a mother to 200 people all together. And I think it's a fantastic feeling. And when they succeed, at the end of the day, you feel that maybe you had some part in it and it makes you very happy. So I want to say that, you know, one could be a creator or could be a user. It's always better to be the creator than the user. If you're using your smartphone, remember that some smart IT people have actually contributed to that. Maybe it's better to be on the next generation of designing these things than just use them, right? <laughs>